With us is Arsalan Bukhari. He is the executive director of the Council of American Islamic Relations here in Washington State. Arsalan, thank you for being with us, and I want to know what you think about what Mr. Obama said last night. Well, I'm glad the president reminded fellow Americans of the importance of uniting as Americans after tragedy hits. Uh, After every tragedy in our history, we have come together as a nation, and that's a message I'm glad he put across. I'm also glad that he recognized the contributions and the sacrifices of the 10 to 20,000 American Muslims. Muslims who serve honorably in our nation's armed forces, many of whom have also made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. I'm glad he recognized their contributions to our society as well. One other thing the president said was that the Muslim community and the Muslims around the world have to help in this war against terrorism. Well, I think American Muslims stand with all Americans in ensuring that we keep our nation safe, that we're upholding the laws of the United States, the the U.S. Constitution. So I think our role is no different than any other American's role. As Americans, we're working hard to keep our nation safe and, of course, uh, reporting any criminal activity like all Americans. I want to get your take on something. Specifically from the Republican side, there has been a lot of discussion about using the term radical Islamic terrorism. Donald Trump, right after the president's speech, started talking about that again. Enough with PC. We've got to be willing to say that. Is that a problem? Is that offensive? Or are these people really radical Islamic terrorists? Well, I think when, it, when you put a qualifier with a race, religion, ethnicity, it's problematic. For the same reason that we don't call crimes committed by certain groups as their racial group crime. For that same reason, we should not call crimes committed by Muslim persons as that religious group and crime. So, for example, the worst anti-black racist blogs repeat the term black crime over and over again. They repeat the term Hispanic crime over and over again. But we don't see those terms being used in mainstream press for good reason. However, in anti-Muslim blogs, we see the term Islamic terrorism, Islamic this or that. And we see that term repeated over and over again in mainstream press as well. So again, for the same reason we don't use qualifiers with race and ethnic names for other groups, for that same reason, using those terms for describing suspects who are Muslims is inappropriate, misleading, inaccurate, and possibly inflammatory. Now, as a result of Paris and what's been happening in the United States, I know there's been a great deal of backlash in this country. There's been racist comments made. There have been threats made. Tell us what is going on here in this in the Washington State area. Well, all I can think about are the children, the thousands and thousands of children who are growing up across our nation, Muslims and those who are perceived as Muslims, who have to put up with the brunt and the consequences of inflammatory rhetoric. So we've seen hate crimes uh, rise. In fact, the FBI released uh, statistics recently saying that hate crimes have been down except for anti-Muslim hate crimes, which have risen over the last year. And we've seen cases of bullying. You know, we're hearing from moms and women who are going grocery shopping to the mall who say they don't feel safe going out there because of all the rhetoric that's being sent around. So it's not the crimes that are committed because crimes are committed often. It's a coverage that follows the inflammatory religiously, racially, ethnically loaded coverage that can determine how the public reacts. And again, the messages that people should be hearing from our leaders are that we should stay united after every tragedy, come together as Americans, as we have in every other tragedy that has faced our nation. Are you seeing any bigotry and hatred right here in the Seattle area or Washington state? We have seen uh, reports of hateful threats made to mosques. We've seen cases of women being yelled at by people who've said really Uh, obnoxious things and really scary things to them. And we have seen cases of young children, again, Muslims and those perceived as Muslims, being taunted, being called names in school over the past few weeks. Have mosques in the area had to step up security? Absolutely. I think after this past attack in California, we sent an email to mosques all across the Northwest, reminding them to ask their local police departments to have patrols when children and families are coming to mosques for the Friday congregational prayers and to ask for patrols at Sunday school when hundreds of children go to mosque for Sunday school. So we've reminded them to take precautions for everyone's safety. So how do you respond when a Donald Trump says something like, we've got a profile, they're the ones after us, we've got to do this, it's not it's not the right thing to say, but you know what, we've got to get serious, this is what I believe. When people think about American Muslims, they should think about the millions of children and moms and dads who are raising them across our nation, and they should think about the impact on those children's lives when they talk about American Muslims. And then if we think about those children and those moms, I think we'll talk about American Muslims in a way that's more educational and productive. Is there anything 
anything else you, the Muslim community, can do or are planning to do to try to reassure people, hey, we're, we're Americans, we're part of this country, we're not the threat here, it's, it's the people who have perverted this religion? Sure. It, you know, it's a simple matter of reminding our fellow Americans that American Muslims are part and parcel of our society. Inspired by their faith, millions of American Muslims give back to society. There's thousands and upon thousands of public school teachers, including many here in Seattle who are American Muslims. Thousands upon thousands of law enforcement officers are serving and protecting our nation, including many here in Seattle. And again, as the president reminded us last night, 10 to 20,000 American Muslims, according to the Department of Defense, are serving honorably in our nation's armed forces. And many of them have given the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Arslan, appreciate you being with us today. Thank you for having me again.